Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound, and I want to thank you personally for taking time out of your day to check out this video in which we talk about the 2009, 2009, I almost said 2019, the 2009 Northern Mariana Islands quarter. Uh, it, this came at the very tail end of the state quarter program that the U.S. Mint launched way back in 1999. It's uh, been 20 years. Um, it was a successful launch uh, to what would be one of the most widely collected modern series of coins to ever exist. The 2009 Northern Mariana Islands was the territorial coin that kind of brought the rear and uh, brought this series to a close. But if you've, uh, if you've been looking through your change and, um, you know, you probably notice that there aren't nearly as many Northern Mariana Island quarters, let alone there, has, there aren't quite nearly enough of the 2009 quarters at all, you know, including the Washington, D.C., uh, let's see, Puerto Rico, Guam, American Samoa, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, and then the final one, of course, the Northern Mariana Islands Quarter. How tough exactly is it to find this particular coin, however? Seeing it's how it's the last coin in the series, um, it was produced during a time where the U.S. was in a recession, usually with stock crashes and, and the economy being bad, you know, in, in, um, in recent history, we've seen a drop off in production of coins in general. Uh, you know, it's, there's just not a lot of them out there that uh, were even produced, okay, during those depressed times of, you know, like the Great Depression of 1929. And then the next 10 to 15 years that follow after that, all the way up to World War II, we've seen a sharp decline in the production of coins. Same here, okay? The Northern Mariana Islands quarter is actually a lot tougher than it looks. To give you kind of an idea, oh, by the way, uh, yeah, subscribe. Hit the bell for instant notification if you haven't done so. Uh, we talk about stuff like this all the time. But let's go ahead and jump right into it, okay? We're going to start with the Philadelphia Minted Coin, okay? Much like you see right here on screen. This is, of course, you can tell that it is a Philadelphia coin because of the small, tiny letter P on the obverse of the coin next to the date. This particular example, uh, there were 35,200,000 pieces made. Now, to you and I, that might seem like a lot. But let's go ahead and kind of, you know, give it a little bit of a contrast to a coin that was produced the year before in 2008. The Hawaii State Quarter uh, was actually the last quarter out of the, you know, the 50 states that was produced. However, there were 254 million examples of the Hawaii Quarter that were made at that time. And it's not even the highest mintage out of the whole series. I was just going back a year. So a, a pretty substantial difference between the Hawaii quarter in 2008 and this Philadelphia Northern Mariana Islands quarter. All right, so by the time we're done talking about the quarters, okay, you'll find that there is only one example of both the Philadelphia and Denver minted coin in this particular state. Okay, so you'll want to see exactly what that is. Um, it, it might be relevant as you're searching through these coins if you find a, an example of this particular quarter so we've uh, we've uh, deduced that 35 million 200 thousand pieces were made okay now let's talk a little bit about the grade of this coin okay you can elect to send these coins off to a third party grader like pcgs or ngc to preserve the uh the state of the coins condition now pcgs has assigned one lonely single solitary mint state 69 grade um that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how tough it is to find, you know, an example of this coin at its highest possible grade by one of these third-party companies. Now, PCGS has a price guide value on this coin in this particular grade conservatively set at $2,000. There was a Mint State 68 coin uh, that sold a few years back on Heritage Auctions 
for $1,920. And there hasn't been too many of them since. Okay, there's not even a whole lot of Mint State 68s that were graded by PCGS, which makes this one of the more tougher coins to find in a high mint state. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Denver minted coin. Okay, some of us would typically associate Denver minted coins as being high quality, all right, better strike, things of that nature. So the 2009D, as you can see with the tiny little letter D by the date on this one, actually there's no date at all on the obverse, I'm sorry, that's on the reverse with the design of the Mariana Islands. Uh, but this particular example, again, a tremendous shortage in production in, in which only 37,600,000 pieces were produced. Grading-wise, the highest grade assigned by a third-party grader is PCGS, in which they have assigned a Mint State 68 Plus, in which only one example in this particular numerical grade exists for this particular quarter. Okay, extremely rare, and uh, not for the faint of heart, because again, how often do we come across any of the 2009 state quarters? Not very. There's not a whole lot of them out there. If you're able to find like a, a full uncirculated roll of any of these dates, you better believe that they are going to fetch some pretty amazing money. So, of course, there's the discretion factor. Do you want to sell the roll or do you want to crack it open in the hopes of finding a really neat variety, an error, or possibly a high graded coin? Because they're all going to be very valuable at the end of the day. So in terms of a, the highest recorded sale of a Denver minted Northern Mariana Islands quarter, uh, there was one that sold on Heritage Auctions January of 2017. That one, however, was an NGC Mint State 69 in which it sold for $1,410. NGC is more conservatively graded, you know, as far as their... Uh, uh, just the way that they operate and the way they look at coins. They, they usually grade about a half a point or a point better than PCGS. They're not as strict. Now, PCGS has a price guide value in a Mint State 68 at $1,400. Now, keeping in mind that there is a 68 plus somewhere out there, probably owned by a registry set collector, um, you know, so the likelihood that another one pops up is going to be tough, but it is a tremendous kind of chase piece for people that like to search through quarters. You know, it might be you, you maybe you might come across one in your change or through uh, coin roll hunting and it might, might qualify for a really nice grade, but 68 and 69 are at the t highest level, it's going to be tough to find anything really, really that nice. Uh, but you never know. So in terms of rarity, when it comes to actual errors of these quarters for 2009, okay, it, it's, it can't be more understated that they are tough. Okay, as a matter of fact, I have five examples of errors that are on 2009 coinage, only one of which involves a quarter. Okay, uh, so that's how tough it is. And these, the, you know, I'm trying to find coins for you that have sold, you know, on like great collections, heritage auctions, Stax Bowers. There are none out there. But I wanted to present to you five really nice, incredible uh, coins of 2009 that are errors. So the first coin that I wanted to talk about on this list is going to be this 2009 native american dollar coin that you see here okay it, again we've seen this before uh you know if you're lucky enough to grab one of these out of a vending machine or at the bank you know exactly what this looks like but this particular example uh exhibits a missing edge lettering error on it okay in addition you'll see that little crescent shaped kind of silvery look on the front of the coin this was actually a strike through um an aluminum feeder finger fragment okay that's uh, kind of a mouthful but uh, a little piece uh, of a component of the press fell off landed on the coin before it was struck and there you go you have a really nice mint error this one graded pcgs mint state 65 and this one sold on heritage auctions august 11th of 2011 for 276 dollars okay 
this might appear like damage, but keep in mind, okay, strike throughs and various types of other errors pop up when you least expect it. So I would definitely keep an eye out on this. The next error that I wanted to talk about here is going to be another Native American dollar, okay, another Philadelphia minted coin. This one, however, is um, exhibits missing edge lettering, like the previous example. So, you know, the edge will be devoid of the date and the mint mark and the motto and everything like that. This one is also double struck in color, okay, with a slight rotation. You're going to see it a lot better on the reverse of the coin. This is a really nice striking example of a double struck coin. However, it's not as strong on the obverse, okay, where you have the Native American profile on there. It's more, more of the stuff that's happening on the back of the coin. Um, pretty nice coin. Nice coin. This one sold on Heritage Auctions January 7th of 2011 for $373.75, okay? Proof positive that, you know, some, of the, some coins that may look like something else might be worth some money so you know it's definitely worth looking for the third error that i pulled aside for you guys is going to be this 2009d this is a denver minted example of the uh, polk presidential dollar okay it looks funny it's missing a lot of the actual features and the relief and devices on the coin um, however this one is what they call a die adjustment strike all right, it's a pretty unique, you know, it's like an intentional error, okay? The, the, the Mint employees have to test out the pressurization, pressurization of the strikes on a few test sample coins, okay? Some strikes may be a little bit too light, like you see here where a lot of the devices are still missing. Um, the, the pressure isn't that strong to upset the full impression of both the obverse and the reverse design. Okay, so that's why it looks like there's a lot of stuff missing on this coin. This one right here graded NGC Mint State 60. All right, so this one, because of its grade, I would venture to guess that it was a coin that possibly might have circulated a little bit and it was pulled out of change at one point or maybe a bank employee or something like that. It exhibits way too much wear for it to be just like fresh out of the bag mint state type of grade this one sold on heritage auctions january 8th of 2010 in the amount of 1265 dollars uh again you know thing coins that look like this whether it's this dollar that penny nickel dime quarter you name it okay if it looks like it's weakly struck you might have something okay it could be a strike through grease or a die, die adjustment strike so we're going to end it off on two absolutely amazing error coins of 2009. Uh, here we go. Another Native American dollar. This one exhibits the missing edge lettering. Okay. Uh, this one, however, is triple struck. All right. So you have the first strike. The second strike is 35% off center. And then the third strike is 40% off center. So you have three amazing strikes that are all offset while you have the one that's normal and then the two other offset by 5% each. A marvelous looking coin, okay? This is about as visually stunning as you could get for errors. This one was graded PCGS Min State 64 and it sold for $1,800 on Heritage Auctions January 5th of 2018. And then finally, I told you I have a 2009 quarter type error. And uh, yeah, it's another Native American dollar. However, this particular coin right here was struck on a quarter planchet. That was intended for one of those 2009 U.S. territory quarters. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. And as luck would have it, this is the most expensive coin on the list. This one graded PCGS Mint State 64. And then at the end of the bidding, this one sold for $4,817.50 through Heritage Auctions on October 5th, 2016. Just a few short years ago. And um, there you go. Any error that involves a quarter for 2009 is rare and very, very sought after, okay? In the case of this particular Native American dollar, um, you know, it's a Native American dollar, but it was struck on a blank quarter planchet, 
that was intended for 2009 circulation strikes. And there you go, you have a coin that subsequently sold for nearly $5,000. It's pretty nuts. Again, proof that with enough diligent looking and just being kind of curious and pulling out all of the interesting coins in your change can be a huge difference maker. All right. And then again, people pay a lot of money for error coins. You just have to keep looking, pull it out, uh, confer to people on like forum chat pages and Facebook, get all the information you need to see what you have. Okay. It's okay to be overly kind of curious, even if you have a coin that might be damaged or clean. All right. It's always better to play it on the safe side and pull out all the interesting stuff and just see what you have. Right. So uh, that concludes the, uh, the video on the 2009 um, quarters, uh, specifically the Northern Mariana Island quarters, along with five of my favorite 2009 U.S. Mint errors. I want to thank you guys for joining in on this special, special episode. Uh, I'm Sean again with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and hit the bell for instant notifications so that way you can get the inside track of all the newest uploads that I do. I want to thank you guys again for joining in on this one. You guys have a wonderful hunt, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.